This year's inductee into the International Festivals and Events Association's Hall of Fame has always wondered what it would be like to be an elephant. After nearly 30 years of working with festivals and events, she finally got her chance when she produced the opening carnival-style parade of the Kuala Lumpur International Buskers Festival in Malaysia, and in the process, tried out as a 10-foot tall inflatable blue elephant. In the course of her career, she has dealt with a three-story tall dinosaur float catching on fire during dress rehearsals in Singapore. An enthusiastic man taking off all of his clothes during an outing to one of her first waterfront festivals in America and being sued for a loss of conjugal affection when an amorous couple tripped over a tent stake. Over the years, she has picked up a lot of useful skills. While consulting in Saudi Arabia, she learned you can actually milk a camel. In Nice, France, she marched in that city's carnival parade with the balloon platoon. Two dozen fairly rotund, funny retired naval men from California who achieved girth via inner tubes under their sailor costumes. And in Brazil, she studied the how of Rio's carnival, but respectfully declined when asked to participate as a Rio dancer. Charlotte joined the IFEA, then known as IFA, when the leading technology wonder was a self-correcting typewriter. Calculators were giant, and the concept of community celebrations didn't mean posting to YouTube. It was an era without internet and websites, when overseas communication was done primarily by telex, and networking with your peers were the only sources of information for a festival professional. No tweets, no blogs, no LinkedIn. It was a time when email was snail mail and ringtones was what you got after sitting for hours in front of a loud rock band. In this pre-web world, Charlotte produced her first festival, the Newburyport Waterfront Festival in 1979, pioneering a new concept of waterfront marketing through the use of festivals and events. Little did she know that she was about to embark upon a 30-year journey that would ultimately see her working in 29 countries on five continents. Today, some 150 festivals and events later, she reflects on how she got started and what keeps her going. In 1979, Charlotte was directing a feasibility study to convert an unused, historic building north of Boston into a cultural center. But the city was reluctant to release the building for such an untried concept. It was January, she recalls, and I was freezing cold and frustrated. When the city fathers were not grasping the concept, I decided to show them, without the building, by taking the whole event outdoors during the summer along the newly completed Riverside Boardwalk. I had never seen a festival in my life. They thought I was crazy until they saw that the event doubled the population of the city. In 1985, she went international. Europe had heard of this idea of merging cultural activities and waterfront marketing and wanted to do the same. Her first job was for the Thames Water Authority in the UK the largest single water authority in the world, which was about to privatize. It was a pretty lonely business, she says in hindsight. I was the only person I knew doing this type of work. But then she discovered IFA. Wow, it was like a breath of fresh air, a real lifeline. I thought I had discovered life on the planet, she says. These people spoke my language. It was a discovery that would profoundly change her life. In the fall of 1987, Charlotte joined the IFA board as the representative of the association's commercial members. Charlotte's company represented a new hybrid, the for-profit festival company. One of her first acts as a new board member was to initiate a bylaw change creating one class of membership, where everyone had a vote and could participate equally in the association's activities. The proposed amendment was approved at the Ottawa Convention in 1988. Ottawa was a turning point for IFA's commercial members in other ways. Charlotte also initiated the first formal trade show, today known as the IFEA Expo, 
working closely with a dynamic young French Canadian, Therese St. Ange. Ottawa was also the place where, in all earnestness, Charlotte asked the questions others were afraid to address. Why was there an I in IFA? We had one member in Mexico, a few in Canada, and the Royal Tournament in London. The London Conference in 1986 had been such an eye-opener. What an amazing opportunity we all would have if we truly tried to put the I in IFA. Meanwhile, Waterfront Festivals Limited continued to grow, adding to its Waterfront Consulting Services a new sponsorship consulting service, a collaborative team which included herself, the late Dan Manjet, then the CEO of Kentucky Derby Festival, and Bruce Skinner, past CEO of the Fiesta Bowl. Charlotte's son, Christopher Hansen, who had literally grown up in the business, took over the management of the summer festivals. Charlotte was elected IFA chair from 1991 to 1992. She traveled to Europe frequently, where she soon learned that European festivals were different than American festivals, both in content and in the way they were run and funded. From this came the idea that Europe needed its own branch of IFA, and in 1992, she began circulating a proposal to see if there was interest, both on the part of the board of IFA and also on the part of the European she had met. The answer was an overwhelming yes. The 1992 IFA Worldwide Convention in Rotterdam, the Netherlands, marked the beginning of IFEA's globalization that today spans five continents. 65 Europeans became charter members of IFA Europe, the association's first affiliate organization, with major startup assistance through conference chairman Dr. Hans Horsting, who later became IFA Europe's chairman of the board for a number of years. Following the convention, Charlotte participated in writing the bylaws and articles of incorporation of the European Association at the House of Lords in London, hosted by Honorary Chair, the late Lord Perry of Nayland. In 1993, IFA Europe hired her to organize a conference at Euro Disney just outside of Paris. That same year, she also successfully bid to bring the IFA Worldwide Conference to Boston in 2001 later postponed until 2004 due to the tragic events of September 11th. In 1994, the Stockholm Water Festival offered some office space, and Charlotte moved to Sweden to produce IFA Europe's next conference, behind the scenes of the Stockholm Water Festival. She began studying Swedish and mastered Lilla Kanin through the expert coaching and laughter of a colleague's eight-year-old son. During her tenure as president and CEO of IFA Europe, Charlotte produced two European conferences each year and grew the European membership from IFA's original five members in 1985 to 135 members in 21 countries by 1997. She wrote the first grant that gave IFA Europe funding by the European Union. The association's board had representation from 19 different countries but English was no one's first language except the British. She left IFEA Europe in 1997 to start International Events Limited, producing Towards 2000, Behind the Scenes of the Millennium, in Greenwich, England, as a global summit meeting of Millennium Celebration Planners in 1998. IFEA again was a turning point. At the 1998 convention in Denver, she and Dr. Annie Sidro met a representative from the Singapore Tourism Board and were hired to create and produce the finale of its Millennium Chinese New Year's celebration, Shingay. It was a career high for both of us, Charlotte says, to have the opportunity to put into action this idea of multicultural collaboration. We brought in performers from 14 countries, many of them are friends from IFEA Europe. With international rebroadcasts, the event was seen by 33 million people over the next two years, and they were invited to return again to design and produce another finale in 2001. Event production, speaking engagements, consulting, and teaching activities have taken Charlotte to some 29 countries on five continents, her global reach paralleling that of IFEAs. 
Although she's repatriated to Boston in 2004, her environment is still international. In addition to designing and producing festivals and events, she now edits the Global Perspective section of IFEA's official magazine, i.e., the business of international events, and writes a regular feature story for each issue. After 30 years, what keeps her going? I love people, she says with a smile, and I have always believed if you can imagine something, you can make it happen. Her advice to those entering the profession? Be curious and never, ever give up. IFEA puts all these resources at our fingertips. We simply have to reach out and connect. This is truly the honor of a lifetime. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 2009 inductee into the IFEA's Hall of Fame, Charlotte DeWitt.